got all right gentlemen and the odd lady who is out there according to the google statistics yeah there you go <laughs> lesbian or otherwise um good evening and welcome i want to, i have the very uh the very great privilege of introducing to you two guys without whom the dating approach program that we've just been running for three days would not have happened because i only wanted to do it once i'd find the right chemistry of coaches and I, yeah i'm really am delighted to have these guys here they've come over and sacrificed their time to spend some time in warsaw and we've just completed a dating course for six guys here in warsaw um, so we'll we're going to talk a little bit about the dating course but just to run through the program of the the evening sit back with your cognac and your cigar and enjoy the smoldering smooth broadcast that's about to make love to your earlobes so uh, the program is firstly we're going to talk about a discovery uh, now John is very much like I was thinking of a phoenix from the ashes I can't I still yeah. haven't quite got it down right the analogy <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a blast from the past, um, a uh, the the, re the reawakening of the the dragon of, 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 of street old. approach. <laughs> yeah. um, he has been pricked into action after ten years in a relationship. So yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about what he's discovered in the last few days about the importance of story in terms of street approach. We'll then talk about the course itself and um, try not to sell too much, but we will be talking it up because I think all think it went very well um, then we will move on to um, to John He'll just give a little bit of a uh, an intro about him and where he is and then we'll introduce you to the new kid on the block hello Mr Tim Powers before wrapping up with some uh, priceless tips for the more vintage dude because we've had a little bit of an epiphany around style and fashion and its importance Let's just uh, just just tell us the story, John, mm -hmm. of how it is uh, of being a kind of a uh, one of the ver very first pioneers of the London Day Game model with the business day daygame dot com and your yep. time as a co lead executive instructor, whatever you called yourself, with Tom Torero, um, and about how it is uh, you've come back into this area and what you've discovered this week specifically around the importance of the story in terms of the street approach. Yes, so. Um, for those of you that have uh, been around the, the day game scene for a long time, you'll probably remember me from many years ago. Um, Actually, a couple of the guys were only here because you were you were on the oh, oh, top, the, top oh, of the billing. Right. right yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I was, you know, I was a, a coach at, at daygame.com back in the golden era of day game, um, and then I disappeared for many years, um, got into something completely different, um, I was in a long-term relationship and I've now come back, back from the dead, so to speak. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been great. It's uh, relit that torch inside me, the passion for what an amazing thing it is. And, uh, and this weekend has reminded me what it was like when I first um, got into this, when you started out, yep. um, you were you were, you were int interested in finding a girlfriend, weren't you? Wouldn't that be fair to say? And getting the stuff, mastering the stuff, um, until that kind of point arrived. I mean, you you had a lot of success, but constant, quite a small amount of time before you stumbled on your girlfriend of 10 years yes, well, yes have well, I misrepresented you I don't know well no when I, I was somebody you know was ne never never good with women had a lot of issues childhood stuff sorted myself out you know um, and then day game was one of the things that I needed to or getting good with women was something I knew I needed to do because I didn't do it when I should have done it which was in my teens I missed out on that and it wasn't until I was in my late 20s early 30s that I really started that that journey of self-discovery finding out what you like in women um, and yeah teaching this weekend it's almost like reminded me what it was like because a couple of the guys it was a great weekend great bunch of guys but a couple of the guys they'd never done this before and it reminded me what I used to be like 
when I'd never done it before and how terrifying it was. Yeah, it, it, it one chap was like a yeah. proper glass ceiling, wasn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. And I remember the first time I went out, I was pretty similar to the way he was. It was like just, just crippling uh, anxiety about about doing it. And it's almost now I can't, almost can't remember what it feels like. I can identify with what he went, what he was going through, but I actually can't remember what it felt like to have that anxiety that bad about the approaching. I can I can picture yeah. it in my mind, but I can't remember the feeling. It's been yeah. so long, you know. Yeah. It... Can you ever remember that feeling, Tim? Uh, yes, I can. Um, it's kind of a long drawn out story, but John. One of the one of the pieces of advice John gave me was don't get a girlfriend before you've gone through the right passage, uh, before you've properly found the abundance of women, before you're no longer afraid of approaching. I had a lot of fantastic success with the day game stuff, but I basically got into a got into somewhat of a relationship with a girl. Basically, fell for a girl and didn't day game for a little while. When I had to force myself into the day game again. Because I, because I kind of become, how do you say it? Like, I'd, I'd institutionalized found, by a relationship. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. I, I because you were I, married too. Are you not? Are you not yeah, talking about this that? Is, I'm not. No, since then. Um, yeah, I attributed too much of my need for external validation onto one woman. Let's put it like that. And and then when that didn't work properly, and I still hadn't quite completed that right passage with the day game side of things. I remember it being very, very, very hard to go out there and approach by myself, but it was still not as hard as when I first began. Yeah, well, you, I think perhaps you took to it more like a duck to water than. I mean, I, I did feel like John. It was. It felt completely a alien. Proper weirded yeah, out. It felt alien. Alien thing. Yeah, yeah. An alien thing to do. That's right. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's so extraordinary that it's, yeah. and that there seems no real rational reason why it should feel so Im difficult to break through that kind of like social condition glass ceiling yeah, there are uh, theories there's theories mm. but no one knows for sure one theory is that it's to do with like um like in the caveman days if you approach yeah. the wrong woman yeah you could potentially get killed for it yeah um obviously when you put your balls on the line you're risking rejection yeah so, I mean, which i guess in caveman days yeah. might have been Rejection. He could have reported you to the chief, and he would have burned you at the stake. Exiled you from the tribe. You yeah. would have got. You would have got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exiled. Yeah, we're hard. We're hardwired to perceive rejection. Yeah. As reject rejection from a social tribe at a certain point in our history would have meant would have meant death. Maybe that's um, what it is. Social rejection yeah. is. And yeah. exile from the tribe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our our machinery, our brain machinery, hasn't really evolved that much in the last ten thousand years. Obviously, now we wander around in suits <laughs> instead of caveman outfits. But yeah, so um, it's been great coming back into it. Um, made me realise how much I miss it, how much I miss uh, actually teaching. Because on the the uh, training course, it's as a teacher you actually get a lot of satisfaction. And I was saying to the guys, almost like when you're teaching, and at the end of it, and you know that these guys have had a fantastic weekend, I get high from it. I actually get, I feel high, <laughs> you know, in some way, yeah. from the endorphins of of the whole thing it's, and it feels very very uh, wholesome and healthy to do a thing to do yeah it's yep. strange isn't it yeah. well, I don't think there's any greater satis job satisfaction than no no and, and, I, uh, and again I used else. to um, when I used to teach the old the boot camps for daygame.com back in the day um, and it would be yeah every, every weekend or every other weekend whenever we do them it would just keep keep getting this feeling it's almost addictive like doing the boot camps because you're, it's, a, it's a social thing. You're talking to men, teaching men. That's another thing that is very enjoyable. Yeah. Teaching men, leading men, talking to women, yeah. um, and then changing what well, changing people's lives. Literally changing people's lives. I'm not saying that to like you know big myself up, but that's what it was. Um, guys would you know I'd get messages from guys telling me that that, that uh, Tom Tom Torero, who he's to teach with, that both of us had, had changed. Change people's change, lives. Change your life. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, you've been what's the word rediscovering old old knowledge. Yes. Um, would you like to just tell us the story of how you've because this struck 
all the guys in, in the group as well as the coaches mm. is quite a significant thing and quite an important distinguishing feature from what let's say you know let's differentiate ourselves from the competition from what a lot, a lot of other coaches in the area of daytime approach to teaching yes so there was something I discovered years ago I can't remember exactly when um, but there was something that like when you watch someone that's very good at, at day game or good with conversation talking to women you're watching him and, and listening to him and you think right, he's so smooth it's so natural what is it that he's doing and one day I figured out what it was and then um, I was able to actually understand the structure of what it is and this is, and all it is it's the structure of a conversation that you have when, with somebody that you know and when you understand that structure and you take that structure and you put that structure onto a conversation with someone you don't know very quickly the person you're talking to will feel like they know you it's a way of sort of assuming familiarity with that person and it's all based on storytelling very simply storytelling and this is something that, get, that gets missed from a lot of the uh, dating advice. A lot of dating advice is based around models, um, which are great. And I think your know, models are really important and they help guys who don't have a structure to follow. It gives them something to, to follow, something to work with. But what can happen is guys get too bogged down in, in the model, they forget how to have a normal conversation. And then what you end up with is very awkward, one-sided conversations of the man trying to find out information from the woman without sharing anything about himself. Now, I would uh, agree with everything you say, but I would actually say that it's not necessarily contradictory mm. to the model. Uh, For, uh, Tim, would you like... Well, are you, if you've got yeah. something to say, yeah. do... do just yeah. to fine tune or yeah. just nuance what yeah. John has said. Sure, so I'd say it's supplementary to the model. Um, when guys come into this, uh, having a conversation is, is an emotional process by and large. When you're talking to your mum or you're talking to your brother or you're talking to a colleague at work, you know, we're, we're connecting to them and we're, we're, we're talking without thinking about it. Um, now, as we were talking about the fear of rejection, when guys get into this stuff, they're, they're frightened. And which is perfectly natural, that, and so they're in a fight or flight state. So their ability to free associate, as it were, their ability to creatively conversate is, is more challenged because they're in that fight or flight state. Um, when we're in fight or flight, if you want to go into the evolutionary biology of it, and you, can, you don't have to agree with this, but this is the, the research and conclusion that I've come to when it comes to evolutionary biology. We want to find out, uh, we view a woman that we've never met before as someone from another tribe. And we want to find out where that woman is from, where that person is from, um, and hence we ask them questions. How old are you? Where do you work? And it's terrible. Um, so what we want to do instead is... Like a customs officer yeah. at the border. And that's because we're in a fight or flight state. So what we want to do instead is assume familiarity. Um, when we're in a relaxed emotional state, when, we're, when we haven't got heightened states of cortisol, we assume... Uh, stress hormone we can assume that familiarity and that's exactly what John's model does um, and they so they do they do work perfectly together assumes because assumes you already yeah. know her yeah, yeah. and they and yeah. just just to cap they do work perfectly well together because you've got the logical model which which um, basically answers to the logical part of the brain that most guys come on the course with but then you're also teaching them with what John's about to kind of share with you how to connect emotionally and once you learn this storytelling skill, which we, you know, we were teaching on Alex's course and getting the guys to do, you can balance both sides. You've got the, you answer to the logical side of the brain and then you've got the emotional side nice. of the brain. Nice, so it's like the emotional subtext to the kind of more intellectual model that you're applying. I, it's interesting, because after you'd given that little talk, because we all need refreshers. You first introduced me to the importance of story, you know, seven or eight, nine years ago now. Yeah, so just to just, just give an example of this and put flesh on the bones, I was in Zara, just a stone's throw from here where we're broadcasting this evening, and I, I went into a shop and was just showing a student how it's a little bit different inside rather than out in the street, and there was a, a re real peach of a girl in a lo lovely uh, pink jacket and a short skirt, nice boots, browsing, 
Um, anyway, we got to uh, a conversation, and I, I made an assumption that she was here buying something glitzy, especially for herself, and she was clearly a focused shopper. She picked up a brooch, uh, and she said, Ah, yes, I'm here because I've got a photo shoot this afternoon. Um, and I'm just getting two outfits just for this photo shoot for Instagram. When she, sh she said it, she was quite almost like apologetic, like it might be something that I would think she was too, what's the word, vain or something. I don't know, but girls can often be, be a bit like that. And, and I said, ah, it's interesting. You know what? I've never done a photo shoot. I was thinking of John in the right way at this point in the conversation um, and then I thought to myself actually I have and I said you know what when I was a kid my mo I had two older sisters and a mother who dressed me up for fucking uh, put me on a catwalk when I was about 11 because I was a blonde kid lots of uh, I was quite cute believe it or not I had blo very blonde hair very blue eyes and they used to pretty well take their fashions you know um, frustrations out on me I was on the catwalk as a, a child model. So th this then, re it was so interesting because it gave her license to talk openly about yeah. herself. Got you. Correct. Yeah. So it wasn't just me going on forever, yeah. although I was being sincere and sharing. Yeah. So break that down for yeah. us, John. So to give contrast, this, the, the, the mistake that guys normally make is when she gave you that piece of information, the guy would and that's the problem with the model is sticking the, rigidly to the model yeah is the guy would then either change the subject and ask her uh, make an assumption about something else or would make more assumptions or ask more questions about that topic when actually all he needs to do is just talk about it himself the topic what's the topic photo shoot that's it simple tell a story and then when you do that it encourages the other person in this case a woman to tell her to, to listen to what you've said and comment on it and tell her own story um, and that's basically it it's so simple and that's what we do when we talk with people that we know this is reciprocal storytelling but you need to tease and challenge her though don't you yes yes within within or that not, no, within that within that can come teasing and challenging but if if the teasing and the challenging is all that you do mm. And, the, and, well, these, okay, that's the point. and these teasing yeah. and challenges are just statements. She will come away from an interaction and not feel like she won't remember you. This is the so. Let me explain something. Women don't remember what you look like. They remember how they feel when they were with you, right? If your conversation is very, very one-sided and everything is about her and nothing about you, even if you get her number, when you text her, she will not remember anything. She will not remember you because she, she didn't feel anything. So. There's a saying that it should be something like 90% about her. Is it in an interaction, it's 90% yeah, about yeah. her, 10% about you. That's not quite correct. No. It's the topics are about her. The topics come from her, yeah. but it's all about you. Magic. Yeah. That's what it is. The, the topics are about her, but it's all about you and how you relate to those topics. Yeah. That's it. And that's what guys miss and that's what yeah. doesn't get taught. Well, look, uh, gentlemen. Uh, that's the jewel and the gem of this podcast if you take nothing else away do try and apply that yeah. and it keeps you focused because when you're running the model as it were um, you're, you're looking for a topic and once you've got the topic don't go Changing off it. on yeah. one just stay with the topic yeah. the best conversations are like oh you know what I'm, I, I work for an engineering company and we produce the blue insulation rubber for the plug you know what the neutral yeah, that it's almost like starting starting an interesting conversation. Yeah. But if you start a conversation by saying, "Oh, I'm a Roman Catholic," mm -hmm. or "What do you think? Are you a socialist or a conservative?" Uh, going small and staying yeah. small yeah. is really yeah. Yeah. powerful. And, and what you'll yeah. find, we don't people don't do it. And uh, what, just quickly, what you'll yeah. find is, if you're in in your interactions, you feel like you're having to force the conversation in. in in different ways like forcing it in different directions and yeah. you're not doing it right conversations have a life of their own and it should be effortless you should be able to talk to, to a girl and not have to 
force a conversation down a particular route. A conversation will have a life of its own and you'll talk about three or four different things um, with, with no effort because it will happen naturally if you use the structure that you, you use when you talk with people that you know and that's the storytelling. So when you tell somebody, like when you, uh, Alex, gave your story about the photo shoot, she will listen to your story and then she will comment on it and tell a story of her own. You'll listen to her story and then you'll comment And that. you'll go, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, you, might you, you might challenge You might challenge, you might tease, but then you'll, you'll tell another story. Yeah. And it's the storytelling. It's the storytelling that creates an effortless conversation. That's the point. And when you've got an effortless conversation flowing, then you can uh, physical, you, you know, generate the sexual side, yeah. the romantic, yeah. tease that and, out, can't and, you? And sorry, just, go, just going back to what Tim, right, Tim? Just going back to what, what Tim was saying about uh, the, when you're in a fight or flight state, the mind freezes up, right? And you can't, and this is why guys run out of things to say, because they're so worried about running out of things to say, they're not listening to what she's saying, um, that, that the, mind, the mind goes blank. When you can, if you practice good storytelling and good conversation, it becomes automatic. You don't have to think about it, because as soon as she says something, you're all, all, your mind is already getting ready with the story automatically. When you're in that state, then the teasing and the challenging is easy because your brain is free to be witty. Your natural wit will come through when you're not focused on the word so much. Uh, yeah, no, I completely agree with that. And I just want to add to that as well. Um, I used to have a lot of my own biases with day game thinking that I, I couldn't connect with girls because they, they weren't deep enough or they weren't interested in my spiritual topics. And actually it took uh, John working with me and he was kind of just not telling me off, but he was like, dude, you don't always need to talk about meditation. You don't always need to talk about yoga or whatever particular topic that you're interested in. But you do need to talk about dopamine. Uh, you do, <laughs> lol. We talk about dopamine a lot this weekend. It's been the highlight of the weekend. We've, been, we've philosophized about, uh, about dopamine, dopamine. and the It all comes of dopamine. to do dopamine yeah. and eating decent yeah. steaks. The expectation of reward. But there is an art to simply listening to what she says, relating to it and telling a story. And as Alex was hinting at, uh, that's where the real connection is, is, can be found. You can form a beautiful connection with women through your ability to relax, listen to what she says, relate to it and tell a story about it. Alex said a moment ago, um, is that where you can get physical with a girl? If you can relax into that environment, yeah. it's, you know, the first part of comfort yeah, is verbal and the yeah, second yeah. part is physical, yeah. so. You've opened the, the communication doors between you and then you can riff on it. Yeah, that's such a golden bit of advice. Thank you, John. Yeah, um, I, I, I th anything that anybody here would like to say about the dating course, guys out there, gentlemen, you might be thinking about doing such a thing. It always feels like a bit of a plug, ka ching ka ching. And if I haven't, if I don't get round to advertising uh, my book, I'm advertising it now. Too late, mate. Fifty two first dates, audible version out recently. John still has not listened to it, in spite of the fact he's a coach on our program. Uh, have you listened to it? Yeah, I've read. Well, I've read it's the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, Probably. Very good. Yeah. Why isn't it in the top ten of the New York bestseller list? Um, Do you know? Is there any is reason, rhyme or reason? It's one of those co contradictions, isn't it? One of the deep questions of life that yes. uh, dopamine cannot answer yet. Um, so, but the dating course, gentle folk. Um, yep. In terms of adding, Tim. Yeah. Just yeah. What do you feel? What your experience about it? And uh, I guess the guys out there might be thinking of doing such a thing and might be thinking it's a bit crazy. Yeah, it, it requires it requires great courage and all the guys that showed up, they had that courage and, and it manif that manifested in their, in their results, which was beautiful to see. What I will say is Alex's decision to do this, because I was involved behind the scenes, came about because me, Alex and John were, you know, we're all talking to each other and Alex went, you know what, this seems like a good thing to do. And it, I can tell you right now, it's a passion project, just like the books. They were never made to become Amazon bestsellers. Is that correct? Not, not that they won't, but you did it out of joy. Is that correct? Yes, quite, quite beautifully stated. Yeah. And this course, this, what I just said, is the same. Um, and it, that really gives They're it an extra out of frustration that to get it out. Yeah. yeah. And, and have a laugh at it. And it was a laugh as well. Yeah. Because you have got to have a little bit of tongue in cheek with this stuff. Anything, John, on your reflections on the course? Yes, um, fantastic. I've, I've taught many, many a course, 
over over the years. Um, lost count of the amount of courses I, I've 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 coached on, um, but this one was particularly special, um, and I do feel it's a dream team that we have assembled here of instructors. Um, we're all slightly different in our own. Do you mean like we're a bit dreamy and starry eyed? <laughs> yeah. I feel, feel in like, our, in our own, like that a lot of the time. In our own unique ways. Um, and I honestly feel like uh, the level of instruction and insight and the quality of the teaching that, that the guys got this weekend, you won't find that anywhere else. Is that true? I, 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 I believe that. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I do believe that. Like I say, I've I've uh, I've taught many boot camps. Ah, as I say, I've I've taught. Well, they many were boot camps then, so that is <laughs> yeah. grammatically correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was. I tell you what, it is. There, there was a um, attention to detail. Um, attention to detail. It, it was uh, attention to personal detail, like the effort that went in behind the scenes. Uh, especially from Alex, of making it personal, and, and each student was assessed, and we discussed That's true. Way, the, the, yeah. the, the level of like, I can't think of the right word, but it's like the opposite of cookie cutter. You know what I mean? This yeah. Very, very personal. Tailored. Tailored. That's the word. Yeah. It was very tailored um, to each student, and I don't think you'll find that anywhere else. Tim. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about your. Uh, how shall I say the most beautiful moment in your in your day game? daytime wow. approach history okay well sadly that's a moment that can never be repeated because it only ever happened once but I guess this is the beauty yeah, of life you're a bit modest because I've known Tim for a while now and I'm like as an, uh, an old uh, an older dude I'm like whoa he's living in London which is not an easy environment you're living in the city of London uh, right in the heart aren't you yeah and approaching girls in the city of London not an easy ask and I have found you something of a uh, let's call you a mini inspiration thank you or even a major one at times oh. um, and the stories of just we'll have to talk about this on another podcast or in, in another vlog but perhaps you give us a, just I remember most of all that moment with the girl on the grass in um, yeah what was it the market round from Liverpool Street yeah Spitalfields Market so um so basically and why that was important for you yeah so basically just to give you guys a very quick bit of background I uh, I came out of a divorce um, in 2019 and I had a lot of rebuilding to do in terms of my self esteem I was very very low and I had the I was very very fortunate to move in um, with a French guy who brought home beautiful girls sober for the first time in my life I felt the, the dark stab of envy and it, was, it perforated into my consciousness so clearly that I couldn't ignore it. Um, before I'd always fob myself off, I'd go on Tinder dates with girls and get horribly drunk, and I'd tell myself I was good with girls. When I saw him bringing home uh, these beautiful women. How old were you at this point? Uh, That's not too. No worries, yeah, personal. I was 32, I believe, at this moment in time. So now I'm 34, so, or maybe I was 31. But I. I realized in that moment in time I couldn't I couldn't tell myself any other excuse I wasn't the man I, I was telling myself that I was and I knew I had to do something about it okay I sat down with Alex uh, a friend his name was Alex also a French guy and he was like Tim just me you will not believe the girls you can get and I was <laughs> like yeah Alex I, I don't believe you in my head I was like, I didn't believe him but then I read a book on psychology and I realized that not everything we feel like we believe is actually true so I knew I had to challenge that belief um, I was very very lucky I was friends with Alex I, was, I don't know me and you hadn't made friends yet but I was friends with John I had a good support network and I really dedicated myself to this game um, when I say game that is you know mastering your relationship Dance with women of love man and yeah and I started going out uh, that summer I was religious about it I was going out um, two approaches a day come rain or shine which doesn't sound like a lot but two would often turn into 10 10 would sometimes turn into 20 I remember there was one particular summer's day um, I decided to myself I was only going to approach the girls that I was scared of so I was, I was going after girls that were you know for me beautiful girls uh, there was one particular girl and um, you know, if I have a type, it's it's the girl next door with a certain je ne sais pois. Um, if I have a, a, a type squared, i.e. 
for that type to be infinitely more attractive it's uh it's model good looks with the girl next door so in, in other words <laughs> a visual unicorn um anyway let's just say i saw that girl um i was on the i was i'd approached 10 girls that day and i was outside of liverpool street station um i saw this beautiful girl by the traffic lights and so i went up to her and i said hello blah blah the words are a blur but some variation of the the day game model that john that we teach here and um she's she, i remember her saying uh, she was from azerbaijan she said no thanks i just want to be by myself tonight i was so i had so much conviction i was i was so in popped up with vibe at that moment i carried on talking uh, if you want to use i was just plowing her with whatever i was saying jibber jabber um, luckily, I managed to maneuver the conversation onto some topics I was really comfortable with, which obviously is not necessarily using John's principle of, of taking the topic she gives and relating it back to you. But on this occasion, it worked. We were jibber jabbering back and forth. She was like, I want to smoke a cigarette. And I was like, well, look, I'm not going to smoke a cigarette, but I will have a rollie with you because <coughs> I'm quite into my health and fitness. And, you know, but occasionally I, I'll, I'll smoke a rollie. And in my heightened state of consciousness at that time, I decided to look um, and I saw two beautiful girls smoking a rolly. So I thought, right, I'm gonna go over to those two girls and I'm gonna ask them for a rolly and it's gonna show the girl that I'm with yeah. that I'm comfortable yeah. with girls. Yeah. So I strolled over and they were like, oh yeah, sure, it's totally nice to get to actually have a conversation with someone who's cool. And so we were chatting and at the time as we were having the conversation, I was talking to the two beautiful girls, we all shared a rolly or whatever. I could tell the, the other girl that I'd originally approached she was kind of gazing onto the conversation, not quite sure. Um, and this was valuable for me. Eventually, the two girls that we got the rollie off, they went, they walked off. And so it was me and the original girl, the, the one that was blowing me away. But you bantered enough with the other two and the, the first one saw, the Azerbaijani saw it all. Yeah, the Azerbaijani was there. We all kind of made friends, but the Azerbaijani knew I was a cool guy at that moment because... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. And, um, and then the Azerbaijani... I, I decided to escalate the situation and I, I said, you know what, let's go and grab a coffee. I said, do you, no, I said, do you want a coffee? And she's like, not really. And I was like, well, I do. So we went to get a coffee. We were having a coffee. We we're in there. And she was like, it's, it's really loud in here and everyone's drunk. Well, we so it's like one friend test after another from yeah. the moment you met her. And, and she was like, can we, can we go for a walk or something? And in my brain, I'm like, oh, when we were in there, right we were talking this girl was for me she's absolutely beautiful uh, i'm not rating the girl i'm just saying in she was i didn't even have a rate uh, uh i couldn't she was i was stunned by how pretty she was and i could not believe it when she was showing me visual signs that she was attracted to me it did not compute hmm. literally what, what, what signs was she showing she was so basically she was coming forwards and back to me she was like diving in and out like in she was diving in and out I was doing that again, so the sound might have gone a bit. She was diving in and out. She was putting her head close to mine and far away and close to mine and far away. And I'm like, I could not believe this woman is this comfortable with me that she's willing to get into my intimate space. It wasn't computing because the way I saw myself as a man mm. at that moment in time was like, this girl is levels above me, right? Not that you want to think like that, but whatever, right? We all have these limiting beliefs sometimes. It's a fact of the situation, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you know, can we get out of here? Can we go for a walk or something? And in my brain, I'm like, okay, Tim, you, you've got to start playing for this now. So even though you don't feel like you're, even though you feel like, okay, for some reason I'm playing in the Premier League, even though I'm only yeah. Division 4, but whatever, I'm playing, so I've got yeah. to try and score yeah. a goal. Not that, you know, whatever. Um, no, so, that's a good analogy in a way. Yeah. Because so, that's a, just a fixed idea that we have, isn't it? And how do you get through it other than taking action and assuming a virtue if you have it or not and assuming that you are in the Premiership? Exactly. Like Leicester or who was it who worked the Leicester way up? Leicester who won the yeah, won the Premier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it can be done. Yeah. This is the Leicester golden story, isn't this it? This is the Leicester golden well, I'm, story. I'm on the edge of my seat. Carry on. So basically, I knew exactly where I was going to take her. It was a summer evening. The sun was just starting to go down. Uh, the air was warm. Um, Liverpool Street was packed. There were loads of drunk people. I took her to Spitalfields Market and there was a patch of grass. All around us were people walking, drunk. On this patch of grass, uh, it was flood lit. The grass was just about the right level of dryness and we had our space. Uh, it was the perfect place and she, she lied down. Now, we'd been with each other for about maybe an hour and a half, two hours at this point. She lied down 
I lie down next to her, right? At which point she goes, you're so seductive. <laughs> she didn't. She did. She did. She used those words. She did. I mean, they're tattooed on the inside of my brain. I was there, she did. <laughs> John was not there. But he was, was coaching in the bushes. Oh, yeah, 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 John had the mics. No, no, no. And, uh, she goes, you're so seductive. And at this point, I, I nearly, I nearly, you know, I, I, was, I got very nervous because I knew it was mine to nearly pay for. what? An orgasm? No, 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 trust me. There was a lot of nervousness to come through. I'll get to that later. You nearly... I was, I was so nervous. Thought. Yeah, because, because I knew it was mine to play for and I didn't want to, you know, F it up. So... Um, okay, the yeah. stakes were up. The stakes yeah. are up, right? She, no, 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 it's, now you now it's tangible. It's yeah, yeah. you've been selected to take the first penalty. One hundred percent. Now it's ta- yeah, those analogies. One hundred percent. But I was, I was exactly. I didn't want to be Gareth Southgate. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, um, such a game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, um, I escalated to the kiss. We started kissing. That bit was fairly easy, and then I started having to try for the take home. So it was like a series of penalties, right? It was, uh, I'm, hung- I'm hungry, are you hungry? Not really. Okay, I've got some cheesecake back home. Do you want some cheesecake? No. And then she goes, but I can watch you eat cheesecake. No, you're joking. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. But then she goes, then she said, she looked at me and said, what do you want? And I, I, that she asked the question direct to my soul at the time, funnily enough. I had an idea that I was going to set up a, a day game coaching company um, That was because I was very, very passionate about day game. So I started telling her in, indirectly about how I had plans to set up this company, but I had to challenge a lot of my limiting beliefs, but it's very, very, very important to me. And when she actually, uh, uh, anyway, whatever, we'll get to that part of the story. But I had to answer from my soul. I had to maintain strong eye contact. That was like the final test. At the end of it, she looked at me and she went, okay. So I walked her back to my house. She went to the toilet. She's wearing a hoodie the and a hat. The final frame test yep. sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. The final frame test. She went to the, the toilet, right? You she, put the ball in the back of the net, so to speak. Well, well, wait, yeah? Uh, uh, no, not yet. No, and um, yeah. she went to the toilet. She came back, right? She'd taken off her hoodie. She had a crop top on. Beautiful flat stomach. She took off her hat in front of me. And her hair, the tresses of her hair, fell down to her hips. She looked no, at me. No, now you're... No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm her not. Her fell down to her. Because she had a hoodie it on. Did, and I was hat. there. Yeah. I saw John, it. you keep saying that. I was there. Wasn't there. there. I was there. No, of, course I wasn't. of course I wasn't there. John was waiting to make his no, no, comeback no, no. into day game. He was joking. living vicariously no, through I was there. I'm, I'm, you convinced me. I was. I was there in the corner filming the whole thing. All right. And then. And then she looked at me. These dodgy. She looked at this is day gaming. YouTubing. She looks privately invading people yeah, with privacy. No, no, you one of these lot? No, All right, no, got no. press on at you, mate. She looked at me and she said, I haven't had sex in a year. So she was in You spir- are now making this no, up. I'm not, I don't I'm think not. anyone's going to believe the story. No, 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 no because she was uh, in spirituality. She'd be doing, what's it called when girls? They, she said she was doing a celibate, as yeah, she referred cel- to it. Celibate. She's oh, doing okay. intentional celibacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, well, how long has she been doing intentional well, celibacy? Well, a year. She told me. Um, so she goes, You're going to get all of my energy. Um, but anyway, I thought, well, sweetheart, it's got to happen first because I was so nervous. You're lucky. I wasn't sure Mr. Feller of mine was going to cooperate. But then I, in my head, <laughs> yeah, in my head, I was so nervous. So in my head, I, I, I just thought, okay, I'll keep it real with the, the listeners here. I thought, okay, give the absolute best. Um, how do I say this politely? Give the, you know, give the absolute best. You're not allowed to use technical. Okay. Terms. Give the absolute oral best book. oral. Yeah. Give the absolute best oral sex uh, okay. of my life, and let's hope she reciprocates, and we're all good. Because then my thing, and then it, and that's exactly what happened. We spent three or four beautiful days together. But to, whoa. To summarise. Hang on, that was yeah. quick. So yeah. that was back at your place. Yeah. Um, so the final thing was to make her happy before you made yourself happy. Was that quite important? Yes. Well, it was important to give incredible oral sex because then, and fingers crossed she would reciprocate because I was that nervous that I, 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 I was worried I might have a blood flow issue so that we wouldn't actually be able to have penetrative uh, sex. And, and it, luckily it transpired and she, she did return the favour with dividends, so to speak. Oh, well, this is a... This is a you know, respectable YouTube yeah, channel. Respectable here. YouTube channel. Very, 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 oh, very, no, but very delicately put. Very Thank nicely you. put. So, yeah. yeah, very nicely put. And, um, yeah. So, look, let's leave that on a cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, just, yep. I mean, I want to hear on. all the details. Yeah. No, I, we're just, it's a great 
It's a great story because it's, it was often obviously a seminal moment. Very much. A, a moment of Rubicon for you. Um, and you're up there with Leicester City, in short. And that, and the ghost of Garrett Southgate has been put to bed. That's because it. of that decision that you made, that you, I think the most, what would you say was the most important moment you know, of all the, you know, it's a series. the evening? Ah. No, 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 you can't give me it's a series. Okay. What, what was the pivotal moment? Hang on. Um, okay. So the pr- the principal was staying in the pocket no matter what. Um, and I, if I had to pick a, a okay. pivotal moment, mm, the real test. The real test. From from hearing the story, it sounds like it was the, the the bit just before she said okay. Yes, that was it. That was the acid test. The bit where she looked into my eyes and said, "What do you want?" And I knew I had to look into her soul, yeah. let her explore the corners of my mind and be completely vulnerable and open, not break eye contact, let her know she could explore me as deeply as she wanted. And I guess in that way, she knew then she could be safe with me. And there it was. Well, there you've heard it, gentlemen, folks, ladies, from the love child of the guru of Wassawa Day One Under, of the Himalayan ashram, where, where it all began. A indeed. blessed life indeed. And you've descended from the mountains to move amongst the men and the women, handing out your... You do look a bit like Jesus, actually. There you go. Well, at the moment. Did you think he's got a bit of a Jesus look? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely got a Jesus look. Because yeah. the thing about Tim is he's, he's really quite disarming. Uh, you know, he's very um, ready to talk about a range of topics with girls, quite deep ones. But you do it in a playful way, <laughs> which is kind of... Yeah, I think girls watch out so we, we need to wrap up gentlemen um, but before we do uh, we just I think one of the interesting things about perhaps the more mature guys I think we coach guys this week from a range of 30 35 to 55 probably um, is the importance of style and fashion would you like to say anything John yes absolutely um, and just to before you, I, I will be producing a vlog with uh, with Anna, so just to let the audience know to go into more detail, so you don't have to yes. go into too much. Detail. So learning day game is hard; requires a lot of time and effort, a bit of investment, um, and there are skills that need to be learned. But something there there are other things you can do that do not require the same level of investment, learning, skill, time, blood, sweat and tears, such as dressing properly, sort out your fashion, um, make, you know, make sure you're well groomed, make sure your flat's tidy. There are these little things that don't require that much effort that will make a huge difference. If you don't do them, you're shooting yourself in the foot because women do not see the world in the way that men do. Men generally are oblivious to things. Women are not. They notice the details. Women will notice your shoes. She will notice the watch you're wearing. She will notice how your clothes fit your body. Yeah, whether your trousers are cut well. Yeah, and, and we don't, we're not talking about buying super expensive clothes. No. It's basic stuff like make sure your clothes fit well. Don't wear silly trainers. That don't do you know what I mean? Like don't oh, go in, don't go out yeah. when you're going out. <laughs> you're, don't go out in your favourite trainers. You're wearing a killer pair of jeans, right? Like tapered jeans, and you're wearing sports trainers. It just doesn't look good. You want to look like a sharp, a super sharp man of you know man of mystery. Don't want to look. Don't want to look like a tramp. That's you know? a good word, yeah. mystery, and because uh, you want to create a timeless quality as a more mature dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rather than a, a, either yeah. a sloppy fat person who's just yeah. a, you know yeah. dressing. Oh, I feel comfortable in what I wear. What, what's the problem, mate? Or a corporate fat cat who just wears you know a lazy suit. And you can really. I think. I think it's been an epiphany for us this, this, this last yeah. few days. Yeah. That perhaps the sort of the age group we're looking at that it actually yeah. really can leverage a lot. Absolutely, because bit. because um, this has been said before. But with women, it's not your looks that are important, but your look is. So you, your physical looks are actually not that important. Yes, it's good to be good looking. Obviously, it helps, but it's not the most important thing. But your look is more important. So when you go up to a girl, if, let's say you're a more mature man, 
um, and you approach a woman and you are you look sharp smart and sharp you will make an impression she, you will be better received by this woman she will give you more time because you it says a lot about you it says that you take care of yourself if you look like crap what does that say about you you know and this is the thing a lot of guys here's the thing is they don't know they don't know that they look like crap this is the thing it's, it's, this is why it's good to educate yourself on on what looks good and why you look like crap exactly but that's a hard pill to swallow it is it is because no mean, one likes to admit that they'd be wearing shabby yeah, old shit for yeah, the last yeah. seven or eight years today yeah. tim that I'm, is, not, I'm, not, I'm just asking for contribution i wasn't singling yeah. you out that is, <laughs> no, uh yeah no that is absolutely absolutely correct that is absolutely correct um, a lot of guys have unconscious awareness in this area and they can easily level up how they are perceived by the woman by getting a nice pair of shoes, a nice well-fitted pair of trainers. And let me just say as well, this is one thing that I was actually touched by. Alex actually recruited in a, a fashion stylist, a stylist for the course, uh, a very grounded woman who, who understands the whole game as well of attraction and men and women and he was able to offer that as an added service to the guys as well. Uh, and she's a 20-something Ukrainian, attra attractive yeah. Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah, attractive, uh, yeah, good-looking girl, yeah. she, you know, she knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Eastern Europeans are happy with older, dating older guys and providing that they... What you were, you were saying something the other day, John? I think it was yeah. like you're dressing for the world, not for yourself. Agreed. Yeah, you, you you, when, yeah you, when you dress well, you, or you, when you dress, you dress for other people, not for yourself. Uh, because the other nice, people, yeah. you, 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 the other people, the people that that you're, yeah, that are going to see you. Um, and it's like having don't invite someone over to your house, and it's just a mess. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, yeah. You, you're tidying it for for them. Yeah, you have guests over. Yeah, you tidy the house. And, yeah, and it's got good old fashioned. Um, yeah. etiquette almost yeah. it's kind of dead and buried yeah. but you can polarise yourself and stand out yeah. and, if you're and, doing and, it and, and no one else is doing and, it and women will be will be <coughs> blown up, blown away by good fashion in a man they will it turns them on like it really does a guy you know when they walk in it's like and, and if you turn heads but with your clothes you know what I mean you walk into a room and people notice you because you're dressed well yeah. that is gets, get, that gets you serious brownie points you become so more attractive um, and it has nothing to do with your face or your your physical looks. Yeah, I had a girl yesterday, just as a proof of concept. She looked me up when we were on Novi Sat. Yeah, how would you yeah. pronounce it? She looked me up and down, as in come and talk to me right now, as I was putting my jacket on. That is a jacket that fits yeah. me very, very well. But I got it at a vintage clothing store in London, and it cost me fifteen pounds. It's a perfect yeah. fit, though. Yeah, it's, it's the fit's more important. But here's the thing: the reason that more. Exp that the reason that the more expensive brands are quote unquote better but they're not always better is because they fit better that's what you're apart from paying for the brand you're paying for the fit now you could go to a Primark and get a t-shirt that fits you perfectly and it will be totally fine or a shirt that fits you perfectly it's just much more unlikely to happen because those clothes the the, the level of quality um, and attention to detail that goes into making those clothes is not it's great, obviously, because it's cheaper. So it's not about the brand, it's about the fit. But you'll find that better brands will fit better. That's the thing. And it doesn't have to be the super, super expensive brands. For me, it's the mid-range brands are the best. I, I, I echo that. But I also yeah. think that, I mean, I, I've done that over the years, but I've, I've also had a, an audit with the stylist. And I've found that... Uh, really revelation because it's helped get uh, rid of some old clothes and it's helped get rid of some old uh, ideas about what I think works for me and what doesn't work for me um, oh, I was saying to you earlier John that you know we uh, we learn like take for example not to ask a question at the beginning of a conversation to make an assumption um, and we suddenly oh yeah that makes total sense the last few weeks, whilst I've been um, having Anna working with me, um, sorting out my wardrobe, it's felt like, oh wow, suddenly makes sense. Well, I'm in Zara, I'm not boss, and she's saying, look, the hem on this is rubbish. This white t-shirt is simple. It looks quality, even though it's only whatever it was, 
15 quid and it accentuates your shoulders and it's, it drops the right length and it works with this jacket. Bing, bingo. And I didn't see it but for the fact that like when yeah, you teach yeah. a student, yeah, she was teaching me to see where I was. Um, and then once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then yeah. once you, you can see never it, go yeah. back to wearing crap again once you know how to dress. <laughs> once you know how. Yeah. yeah. And and not to blow smoke up Alex's ass, but he does have a he does have a style. Absolutely. Like you can see, and not even actually when you see him in person, not only that, right? His clothes match the colour of his eyes, right? So that is, I'm a man, and I'm noticing that. Think about what a woman is noticing. Um, the thing is, you can get, and I'm repeating what Alex, Alex taught me this, right? You can get lots of fashionable clothes, clothes that are in vogue by themselves. But it's not the same as style. Uh, fashion will always go out of fashion. Style never goes out of fashion. That's a beautiful moment to, I think, to uh, segue out of this evening's podcast. For me to thank uh, Mr. Matrix, the Phoenix from the Ashes, um, and uh, the irresistible, irrepressible uh, Mr. Tim Powers. So I hope you found that useful, guys. Uh, stay tuned. We've had a fantastic few days. We've learnt a bunch. Um, strap on your big hairy gonads and now go out and do it. Goodbye from me. Oh, and goodbye from me. <laughs> and goodbye from me. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Good night. <laughs>